What's up guys? First team review of 2021, or first team of 2021 really, uh, the skill military, skilletary, mill? One of them. Uh, this is the newest team to be completed in the game. Uh, while again, not all the characters are farmable, I figure I'd get these videos out as soon as I can. This is as soon as I can. This is as soon as I was able to access the characters. Let's uh, take a quick look at them. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit less about availability and a little bit more about usability than I would normally do because, unfortunately, this team doesn't quite have usability. This is the best I can guess as far as what I'd like to place the characters. Uh, I'll go into reasonings why when we look at the tier fours and everything else. So let's take a quick look at this team, how it works in a simple blitz fight, and get a real good understanding of what to expect. So the Skilletary team uh, is what we like to call luxury vanity teams in all of gaming, especially in hero collector tile gaming. Uh, very similar to like the Sinister Six team in that, uh, or the Doc Ock Sinister Six, chargeable Sinister Six. Uh, they uh, are great and there's a great use for them and you can have a lot of fun with them. But if you don't have them, you're also fine. This is a uh, luxury to have, a luxury to invest in. And as we go over the tier fours in them, you're going to figure out exactly why it's a luxury. But the biggest takeaway from this is while Killmonger is a great character available in the raid stores that everybody can access relatively early with a lot of value on the Wakandans, value, uh, the mercenaries, and now the Skilletary team, uh, it's pretty good to expect to invest in him because you're also going to get value out of the other teams as well as the chaos theory monthly event uh, punisher you get him for free at the beginning of the game this is more of a thank you for playing for a long time kind of investment than a stop what you're doing and invest in these guys kind of investment if you started with the defenders it makes sense that you might have a stronger punisher uh, either way putting him on this team does benefit the entire team and then Merc Soldier, if you look really hard, he's kind of like change that fell into a couch. You have him, you didn't work too hard on him, and you probably have him at about four or five stars that you might not have even put in. Just because of premium orbs that disappointed you, etc, etc. So, now that we've seen them a little bit in action, uh, let's talk about their usability. So, as with most teams that are kind of formulated later in the game, it's pretty likely that yours is going to look very similar to mine. Maybe not in exact power, but in variable uh, investment. My Killmonger and my Punisher are significantly higher invested, mostly because I've been playing the game for a significantly larger period of time. Uh, Punisher, as I said, was the first character uh, you get in the game, more or less. You get him for free. And then Killmonger, you know, I was around when his Blitz came out the first time. So these are characters that I've had done for quite some time. Obviously, Merc Soldier, even though, look, five red star, super excited about that when that happened. You know, it happened. I didn't pay attention. This just happens to be the Merc Soldier I have that I got from playing. Uh, I'm pretty confident most people have a Merc Soldier, maybe three, four, five star. No investment. I get it. There's way better skill characters to invest in. Not a big deal. And then we have Red Garden and, and Yelena. Uh, those characters are new to the game, so it's very unlikely unless you were willing to spend money or catch them during their Blitz and Milestone event, uh, which are going on at the time of this video, you're not going to get much further. For me, as far as I'm concerned, as long as I can get them to about four star each, I'd consider that a win for me. Yes, I'm aware that they uh, need to be higher invested in order to accomplish things. The truth is, what this team accomplishes... I'm not really looking for. It's just a nice luxury that I, I have the opportunity to invest in or not, depending on where I feel. So usability is simple. Uh, it's They're actually usable pretty much everywhere. They uh, are missing a healer or a dedicated healer from being a raid team. But if you actually use this team, they are a pretty decent raid team. If you were to replace Merc Soldier with Shuri or... Actually, Shuri's really good on this team, just from how everything works out. But Shuri or uh, Merc Lieutenant can be okay on this team. Or, uh, you know, Minerva. Anyone who's going to heal would actually convert this into a raid team that has all the ingredients. Red Guardian and Killmonger 
keep themselves active for a pretty decent amount of time. Yelena and Punisher are pretty decent damage dealers, and the last character would be a healer to give them sustain. Uh, I think you can use this as a raid team, especially because there's a lot of raid nodes that require either skill characters um, or maybe in the future military. I think you'll be able to get away with some of these characters in that uh, cycle. Uh, as far as U7, no chance. Maybe Red Guardian stands out as a character you might be able to use, but this team does not hold up a candle to the power you need to get through U7s. But maybe some of the Greek raids, you might be able to get a little value. And again, we're not individually valuing characters like Red Guardian, whose kit is really good, all things considered. Uh, we're valuing the team, and the team is okay at raids. As for Arena, again, yeah, at the beginning of stages of the game when nobody has anything of value, you might be able to steal a win or two away. They might be a reasonable defense. And again, Red Guardian might be a reasonable character to put on defense on his own. But this team, you're not going out of your way to invest in them for anything. Uh, as for War, this is a War offense team. Uh, and we'll go into details about why later. This team's job is, is to be able to defeat uh, some of the biggest problems. And one of the teams that have been kind of speculated as to uh, the team these guys are going to counter is the Marauders, which uh, they have all of the parts capable of countering the Marauders, all of the, the characters, the kits. It works. There is one downside, though. Uh, and this is just kind of a logical downside. The Marauders are such a good team across the board, full of such good characters across the board, that it's more likely that right now, the Marauders teams you're seeing are either very highly invested or on their way to be very highly invested. So in order to build a team to stop them, it stands to reason that these guys would also have to have relatively high investment. You shouldn't expect to see a four or 500k Marauders team and beat them with a 300k skill military team. Uh, it could happen, and there are some teams that have been hard counters in the past, like X-Force or, uh, you know, X-Force can counter certain teams, and the Symbiotes can counter as Guardians, and the Black Order kind of beat everybody. That's not what this team is. This team is just relatively good, has the ingredients, but is kind of missing something. So, as far as usability, they are usable in a lot of places, but they're no one's first pick, and that kind of lies the biggest issue with this team because when they're not great at anything it becomes significantly harder to justify investment and we're going to do that right now when we look at the tier fours again not going to go over iso 8s i'll do that in a separate iso 8 video i'm still not 100 percent sure i like the iso 8s i have let alone the fact that i didn't even bother putting one on him uh i just kind of want to play it through i i think killmonger always stays the same but we'll go into that in a later video once i get a real good feel for the team so starting with merc soldier um I'm going to go on the record and say, yeah, like I didn't even think to put the last pieces of purple in him and it costs nothing to do it. So that should say everything it needs to. But just taking a quick look, um, the passive on him is the only thing that stands out. Obviously, this one is immediately worth it for using it right now, but slightly more damage for him in war. Uh, it's an additional 30% damage. Uh, I believe I don't believe it goes to 50. I believe it just becomes 30 uh it's not that good right but it is a good upgrade uh and it will double uh well it, it applies to both him and skill military or specifically just military it's fine this makes sense it's good on both sides of the war it gives him a lot of usability it's an okay tier four uh, especially as a pass on the team if you plan on using him uh this is a forced tier four uh, you see these very infrequently, but sometimes characters have them. Now, what this actually does is increase the damage by 40%. I'm going to go ahead and click these buttons too while I'm here, right? Uh, what this does is increase the damage by 40%. But you only get the in-war clear two positive effects on primary and adjacent targets if you put tier 4s in it. So, unfortunately, you need tier 4s in this in order for it to do the main thing. It's not a damage attack. It's supposed to be the clear. His focus isn't great. Uh, so I don't even think you have to justify putting this in until you have him at a high level anyway. And at that point, you know, it's kind of required. So it feels bad to be putting tier fours in a character that is just here. But if you want this team to do something, it's required. Like, it's specifically, 
it needs to be there. So I think that while it sucks to admit it, uh, and unlike the previous one where you get the first reward at tier six and then it gets better, like this doesn't clear one positive effect and then clear two, it forces a tier four. I think it's poor design, but unfortunately we don't get to design the game, we just have to play it. I think it's kind of required. And then Assault Rifle, uh, <laughs> I'm not even confident that this is worth the 25,000 gold I'm spending on it, but what else am I gonna do with it, right? Uh, it's small increase in damage, not very relevant. It's not like there's many assists you can expect from this particular character, unlike characters like Hydra Rifle Trooper. So, unlikely to be investing that last tier 4 and 40%. But still, two tier 4s in a minion character that just slightly got reworked, not very high up. Uh, moving to Yelena, newer character, starting Red Room. Um, this is a great tier 4 investment for this character if you're to use her in RTA. Um, and somewhat extent war, but that's more of a depending on the matchup. You know, like if you're expecting to go against the military team on defense with the military team on offense, or if you're expecting to go against uh, the mercenaries, this uh, will increase not only the crit damage that she's capable of doing um, in, in stealth, which she's in stealth relatively often, but it increases the or lowers the crit chance and it says by an additional 15 so it goes to 25 percent chance reduced crit fundamentally this ability just somewhat negates iso eights on certain characters or certain teams so if you go up against a team you should be able to be able to stop them from critting often with this setup um and this is of course kind of irrelevant if the team if this team or another team has hanger buff you know if they're on defense and the guy has hanger or you have boosted team their crit chances are relevant because blocks, you can't crit if attack's blocked. Uh, same thing if you're using this team on offense and you have hanger, um, they're not going to crit you no matter what, at least it's much later anyway. So it's a good investment. The numbers make sense. And, and these kind of things, you don't see these too often, but when you do, they're great. Like Loki has one and you know Thanos Empowered has one. Any, uh, Emma, anything that just reduces the stats of your opponent's team are pretty good. So this is a good investment but it's not nearly a required investment. It might be required to do something, but it's not... It, it, that something has to be very specific, like counter a specific team. Das Vidonia, uh, it's damage. It's damage upgrade. It goes to 50% crit chance, um, and the damage goes to 300, and it clears all deflects. Not ready on turn one in general, unless the team kind of powers its way through. So, uh, well, with the team it can be. But it, it's not amazing. It's just good. It's good damage. Uh, she is the damage dealer. She's hitting multiple targets. Uh, the chance has an extra crit chance, which kind of leans into her being a raider. Just throwing that out there. This attack cannot be blocked. Huge. It's a good attack. Uh, I don't think the tier 4 changes it fundamentally. I just think it's more damage. So if she ends up being the major damage dealer on your team, you know where to go. Going dark. This is one that's kind of big up there. Apply Disrupt. Uh, you get an extra turn of Disrupted from the setup. Uh, you gain plus two stealth to a maximum of three uh, as opposed to plus one. So this is big if she already is in stealth or not. Basically makes her way more survivable from anything but an AoE uh, or an attack that clears stealth. And then a slight increase in damage. Uh, this is a single target attack, but it does transfer some positive effects. This is a very good tier four investment for the team. Uh, I don't think it's required at all, but it is a good overall investment that will make uh, your team have more control over the fight. So this is not bad. And then Widow Strike. Um, if this character or any ally has stealth, always transfer two positive effects. So this is more of a... If you're going in, you, you, you upgrade it. But you don't touch this until the other things have been upgraded. You know, the, uh, the Widow's Bite or the, the Widow's Thing. So, gain an assist from a random skill military or Black Widow. If this character ally has stealth, 50% chance to transfer as opposed to always transfer positive effects on primary target. First of all, it's situational. They have to have positive effects, which means you can choose a character, but sometimes you might not have any. Then it has to have stealth, even if uh, you're ensuring that they have stealth. No one else on that team is really throwing stealth around or, or going into stealth. Uh... No, this is just skippable. Even though it does do some cool stuff, it's totally skippable because of the situation in which it works out. So she has some decent tier four upgrades uh, as opposed to the previous character where they were kind of required. 
Moving to Red Guardian, uh, I immediately upgraded this one. The increase in health for him and characters like him. That has nothing to do with war. That's alone worthwhile. You see it in characters like Black Bolt that have it too. It's really great. When this character drops below 50%, um, no big deal. But the big thing is apply speed up to all skill and military allies. This is like, if you're starting to build this team, this is the first tier 4 you put in it. Now, you're also committing, if you put this tier 4 in, to like 8 or 9 more tier 4s to complete this team out. But even at the beginning, this one gives them the speed uh, and, and the power that they need in order to kind of push through with a little bit more survivability. Great tier 4 investment. Red Star. Damage tier 4. Enough said. Iron Curtain. Uh, goes from 1 negative effect clear to 2 negative effects clear. This becomes more relevant later in the game. You can get away with not touching this tier 4 at all for a really long time. That said, a little bit more healing. Clearing two negative effects instead of one. Reasonable. The apply defense up and everything that's happening here. This happens way earlier, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, oh, that was that. And Soviet Slam. Damage. He's not really a damage dealer. He has a decent damage stat, but he's very slow. So you're not relying on him to put out a lot of damage. He doesn't get too many uh, counters from any of his abilities, so he's not getting extra shots in, so the damage doesn't make too much of a difference. So as far as he's concerned, passive and special are good. Red Star and Soviet Slam are like optional from like much later if you end up having to make your team a little bit stronger. Uh, but that's pretty much it. And he's very Red Star and Star dependent. Like he kind of needs them. His base stats aren't phenomenal, but even a three star, three red is pretty okay comparatively. So, you know, just assuming all of the things double up when he doubles at 80k, he'll have over 200,000 health, like close to 15,000 damage, etc. Uh, and armor is a useless stat, so it doesn't matter. So he's a decent character uh, overall. He's got a lot more value outside of the team than on the team. But if you don't have him on the team, that team ain't going to do anything. So kind of makes sense there. Uh, Punisher, as is tradition, uh, Punisher is a damage dealer. Um, this, These investments you see I have are from the old days of Punisher. I'm going to look at them from the perspective of this team. Uh, there's really nothing here that there's any reason to tier 4 as far as that team is concerned. Because one, uh, there's not many city heroes on your team. Uh, and two, uh, Daredevil's not an ally. Uh, the gaining damage... Uh, for villains happens way earlier in the fight not here this just irons out the defender's value you could skip this for the skilletary if you haven't already put it in for the defenders don't bother uh fully loaded is just aoe but again we reached another problem this is a great tier 4 investment for damage on him in war if this character is three or more skill military allies attack primary target for 240 plus 20 so it's a aoe attack that also murder somebody else um reasonable attack huge upgrade only good in war so you get to decide if this is relevant to you or not i think the upgrade of 30 percent damage to all especially because if they're villains is reasonable but i'm not 100 percent sure this is uh where i want to be on punisher right now grenade launcher another one completely useless until you tier four here if this character has three or more skill transfer one positive effect from primary target to self and all skill military allies if you don't put it on this he's just a damage dealer you know um this is kind of salty that you don't get this early and it upgrades again i really don't like these reworks overall but you need to see it in order to know this there's at least two tier fours that punisher needs in order to function on his team it's a commitment you're going to have to make. And then M4 Carbine. The biggest thing about M4 Carbine was it increased the damage of his assists and his counters atta counter attacks, which happened quite a bit on the defenders. On this, it does nothing, so you could skip it. It's kind of funny. Um, they actually made it so that the least likely to be upgraded abilities while he was on the defenders are required, but the two that uh, were really good on the defenders are almost useless. Kind of, kind of... I see what you're doing there, Scopely. Anyway, uh, last we have Killmonger. Um, nothing really changes as far as what Killmonger is doing is concerned. All he all he is is damage, so the investment is there. There's a couple of upgrades. The first 
only thing that matters here is the counterattack for Wakandan and skill military ally. Um, they just added skill military. This was a great when it was just Wakandan ally. Now it's great because it's both. They also removed the raid. It used to be in raids. Now it's not. Uh, as for this one, it's just more damage. You notice I skipped it. I never needed to worry about this being more damage. It's a very long cooldown. Usually it did enough damage than worrying about, you know, it getting countered or whatever because counterattack breaks the chain no matter what. Uh, full auto. <laughs> Transfer one positive effect, excluding taunt from primary target to self and off skill military. Uh, this was just a really big damage output attack. It was, you know... A triple hit is 600% damage. Obviously, each hit is reduced by armor, but it's still a lot of damage. And if it was crit, gain offense up, lose charge, etc. The attack was always a really good attack. Now it's just really good on any team you would put him on and skilletary. So pretty good investment right there. Uh, and focus fire. Again, it wasn't as good as it was. I never took it away. They reworked it. It, it, it spoke incorrectly. It didn't do what it said it did. Uh, it used to say it did, like, I think 900% damage overall, or 990, almost 1,000. Now it's significantly less. Um, but it's still a good attack. You can totally skip it for the team. Uh, but since, you know, there's some assists being thrown around from the team, it's possible that you might get a little bit more value out of it. Much like Punishers, totally unnecessary, but it's a big damage attack. And you might have already put these in him for his use on the Mercs or the Wakandans. Uh, and that's pretty much it as far as tier 4s are concerned. Uh, when you're looking at the overall team and you got to give it a rating, I like to give teams ratings based exclusively on um, how good they are at the thing they're supposed to do, right? Uh, compared to other people, and then how good they are overall. So I, I think, like, well, they're really good at this thing, but they're not really good. At they're like a B- minus team. That's it. Like, I don't want to spend too much time on it. They're B-. minus. Like... I, I might even give them, like, a trash plus. Like, they're not worthwhile to put in. Individually, you have value in Killmonger. You have value in Punisher. You have value in Red Guardian. There's some value in Yelena. They, Merc Soldier makes this team good. But as far as what this team is capable of doing, uh, they're just another option, and they're not the best option. They're just another way to do it it's like if you were going through a toll and they were like you have to give us 35 cents well like well guess what this is the 35 pennies option to paying the toll as opposed to giving them a quarter and a dime or seven nickels uh it, you know this is 35 pennies <laughs> that's what this is for the toll so are they capable of doing what they're supposed to yes is it worth your time effort or investment to invest in them no. If you do, will you get something out of it? Of course you will. And that's pretty much it as far as the skilletary. Uh, comment below. Talk to me about how much you've invested in them or if you just skipped them like I know most people did. As you can tell, I really didn't even buy many. Uh, I bought one offer of Yelena, and that's because I pulled a 7 red star on her. But if you guys know me, just because I have a 7 red star doesn't mean it makes a good character, a bad character good or a good character great. It just makes them stronger versions of whatever they were. Yon is not very impressive to me at any stage of the game, so I didn't really feel like spending much money. Anyway, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangili, and I'll catch you later.